Hi everyone, congratulations on finishing your second week of Virtual Wildwood. You're all doing such an amazing job. Today I'm going to finish off Lesson 57. We'll start off with Part 6 and then we'll go right through Part 10. So in Part 6 we're looking at making a number family for each problem and we're going to answer the question. So remember for any type of word problem there are two types. So there's either a difference problem or an all problem. And the way we can find this out is whether they have some specific key words that we're looking for. So if it's a difference problem, we're going to look for whether there's fewer, less, more, heavier, or lighter in the problem. For an all problem, this is our typical word problem and the typical way we form our number family. We're comparing two different things and the big number is what is the all in the question, or what's the total? So let's take a look at A. Just clear this off for you. So for part 6A, we have a word problem that says, there were butterflies and moths in a jar. There were 37 moths in the jar. There were 53 insects in all. How many butterflies were in the jar? So the first thing that popped out to me was one of our key words. There's the word all. So they said there were 53 insects in all. So our all is always one of our big numbers. I'll put all here and there are 53 insects in all. The other fact they stated was that there were 37 moths in the jar. So that'll be one of our small numbers. And then what we're looking for were how many butterflies were in the jar. So this is our missing number, which would equal how many butterflies. So right now we're missing one of our small numbers. So we have two other numbers so what would we have to do in order to find out what our small number is subtract that's right so we we'll always start with our big number go with 53 minus 37 all right so then we'll go 3 minus 7 we can't do that so let's borrow this 5 turns into a 4 We'll carry this over. Now this is 13. 13 minus 7 is 6. And then we have 4 minus 3, which is 1. So how many butterflies were in the jar? 16. So we are 16 in the jar. Let's do one more example. Let's look at B. This all set up. All right, so B, there were moths and butterflies in a jar. There were 37 fewer moths than butterflies. There were 53 moths. How many butterflies were there? All right, so one of the keywords that stood out was in the sentence, there were 37 fewer moths than butterflies. So that looks like a difference problem. Now the number, the difference that they're looking for is always right beside the key word. So in our sentence, we can look back. There were 37 fewer moths than butterflies. Since that number is right beside the key word, that's what our difference is. So I'll put 37 here. And there were 53 moths. There's our small, other small number. How many butterflies were there? So that's our question that we're trying to solve. And that's our missing information. So we'll put butterflies here. So we know there were 37 fewer moths. Then butterflies, we know there are 53 moths. So what would we have to do if we're looking for a big number 
since the butterflies will be a larger amount than the moths, we'll have to add. So I'll do it over here. We have 53 plus 37. So three plus seven equals 10. And then we have one plus five equals six and six plus three equals nine. So how many butterflies were there? 90, all right. All right, so just make sure that when we're reading, we find our keyword. And if it's a difference problem that has a word such as fewer, more, less, heavier, lighter, then we'll look for the number right beside that word. And that's where we can start off with our difference. Then we look at any other information that's present in the problem. And that'll show whether it's a small number or a big number here. So you'll be finishing C and D of part six on your own. So let's take a look at them first. So we have part, so we have C. Remember, keep an eye out for any key words. So I'll even read them through with you. A hippo weighed 6,480 pounds. A draft weighed 4,020 pounds. How much heavier is the hippo than the giraffe? Let's underline our keyword heavier and that'll let you know whether it's a difference or an all problem. Make sure we have heavier underlined. Now let's look at D. So Jim had $297 in all. We have our keyword right in the first sentence. Let's make sure we circle that so we remember what type of problem it is. If he had $175 in the bank, how much money was not in the bank? So make sure we have our keyword underlined and remember that it is a money problem. So remember all your dollar signs. So you can finish off C and D and then join me back for part seven when you're all finished. All right, I'll set us up for part seven. We're multiplying, adding, and subtracting fractions. So in A, we have five over seven times five over seven. So remember when we're multiplying, both the top and the bottom number will change. And it doesn't matter if it's the same bottom number, we can always multiply the top and the bottom. So our bottom is seven times seven equals 49. And our top number is five times five equals 25. Nice job. So our final answer is 25 over 49. Let's do a couple more examples. We have in B, we're subtracting, so we have five over seven again, minus five over seven. Now, when we're adding or subtracting, we're only going to change our top number. So remember, with this, we always wanna make sure if we're gonna add or subtract, we have to have the same bottom number, which we do, it's seven, so I'll even write down seven before we solve it because I know it'll stay the same. We only change the top number. So five minus five equals zero. So our answer is zero over seven. Let's do one more here. Look at C. Which has five over seven plus five over seven. So now that we're adding, we have the same bottom number already, which is a great start. We don't have to change anything. Now, what will our bottom number be for our answer? Seven. So our bottom number always stays the same. So let's look at our top, five plus five equals 10. All right, so our answer is 10 over seven. So you can pause this video now, finish up part seven, and then we'll get back for part eight together. All right, so for part eight, we are copying the problem and we're completing the equation to either show a fraction or the whole number. So I'll write down a few examples. 
So here we are, we have our first few examples. A, we are missing our whole number. All we have is our fraction, 7 over 1. So what we can do is just divide. 7 divided by 1 equals 7. And we can also look into how many times does 1 go into 7. So how many times can 1 fit into 7 is 7. Now here we're missing our top number. So how to solve this is we have to multiply these two numbers to give us our top number. So 3 times 9 equals 27. Right? So when you're missing your top number, you're going to multiply your whole number with your bottom number. But if you're missing your whole number and you just have your fraction, you can divide, divide your fraction. So now you can pause part A and continue with the rest of the parts and meet me back at part 9. So part 9, there are a few steps. We are adding whole numbers to a fraction. But there are a couple steps that we have to do before we get started. So right now, I have a whole number plus a fraction. Can I add a whole number to a fraction? No, the answer is no. What I need to do is to add two fractions together. That's the only way we can complete this. So my first step is turning my whole number into a fraction. What is any whole number always above? What's the bottom number of any whole number? A one. So there's my first step. And now I look and I think, well, I can only add when I have the same bottom number. So what could I do to get the same bottom number as three over five? With one, I can times that by five. And now whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top or else our whole number would change. So I have to do one times five and then on the top, 27 times five. So now I'm gonna rewrite this into two fractions that we can add together. So 27 times five equals 135. over five, so I'll erase this so it's not confusing, 135 over five plus three over five. Right. So now we've multiplied these numbers to create a new fraction, 135 over five, and now I'm able to add these two numbers. So when we're adding, we always keep the same bottom number, so I know our answer will be over five. And then at the top, we have 135 plus 3, which would equal 138. All right, so this is our answer. So you'll be doing B by yourself. So just remember, we can't multiply a whole number. Sorry, we can't add a whole number to a fraction. We first have to change our whole number into a fraction. A whole number is always on top of a one. So we have to change our bottom number to fit whatever number we're adding. So that's why we multiplied by five. Whatever we do to the bottom, we do to the top. You can rewrite this so you're adding two fractions and then you get your answer. So just make sure you always are turning your whole number into a fraction and whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. All right, now we're on our last part. So finish up B for part nine. You can pause this video and then come back once you're all finished. Let's do part D together. We'll do a couple examples. And then we're all finished with our lesson today. So here we have some division practice. All right, so I wrote down a couple examples. So we're looking at how many times does four go into 28? 
Another way you can look at it is 28 divided by 4 gives you what number? Or you can also think 4 times what number equals 28? So you can think if 4, can that go into 2? No. Can 4 go into 28? Yes. And how many times does 4 go into 28? 7 times. So always make sure you put that number on the top and in the ones column to show that it is a 7. In our next one, we're looking at 32 divided by 4. We're thinking how many times does 4 go into 32? And what number multiplied by 4 would give us 32? So we have to think. You can even check your multiplication chart. 4 times what equals 32? The answer should be 8. So again, writing that above the 2 to show that it is in our 1's column. And you can do the rest of your examples on your own. I hope you have a wonderful long weekend and thank you so much for all the hard work that you're doing. Keep it up, guys.